happy to be here today to address this global business summit. This is a good platform for bringing together economists and industry leaders. I compliment the Economic Times for organizing this event. Over the next two days, you will debate growth and inflation, manufacturing and infrastructure, missed chances and unlimited possibilities. You will see India as a country of opportunities, unmatched across the world. I assure you that your inputs shall receive my government's highest attention. Friends, Makar Sankranti was celebrated on 14 January. It is an important festival. It is the beginning of Uttarayana, which is considered to be a Punya call. The Lodi festival also coincides with it. On this day, the sun begins its journey north. This marks the transition from winter to spring. The new age India has also begun its transition from winter of subdued achievements lasting three to four years to a new spring that beckons. <laughs> the country had fallen into deep despair with two back-to-back -back years of below 4% growth and governance at rock bottom. A series of scams from telecom to call had paralyzed the economy. We debated from the dream of India as a land of opportunity. No longer we can afford the flight of capital and labor for back of opportunities. We have to repair the damage that has happened. Restoring growth momentum will be an uphill task. It will take hard work, sustained commitment, and strong administrative action, but we can overcome the mood of despair and we must. It is in this context what all the steps we have taken must be seen. Friends, destiny has favored me to serve this great nation. Mahatma Gandhi said that we should not rest until we wipe every tear from every eye. Elimination of poverty is fundamental to me. This is at the core of my understanding of cohesive growth. To translate this vision, into the reality of a new age India, we must be clear about our economic goals and objectives. The government must nurture an ecosystem where the economy is prime for growth and growth promotes all-round development, where development 
is employment generating and employment is enable where skills are sync with production and production is benchmark to quality meets global standards and meeting global standards drive prosperity most importantly this prosperity is for the welfare of all that is my concept of economic good governance and all round development it is up to us to create conditions for the people of india to blossom and create this new age india friends let me outline what we are doing to assure in this new spring my government is moving fast in designing policies and laws to promote growth this is where i seek everybody's cooperation first we are committed to achieving the fiscal deficit target announced in the budget we have worked systematically in this direction many of you practice kaizen in your companies reducing wastage means cutting access and preventing misuse this requires self discipline that is why we have the expenditure management commission to suggest cuts in wasteful expenditures this way we will make the rupee more productive and deliver maximum bang for the buck second the petroleum sector has been major reforms diesel prices have been deregulated this has opened up space for private players to enter into the petroleum retail gas prices have been linked to international prices this will bring a new wave of investment it will increase supplies it will resolve problems in the key power sector today india's cooking gas subsidy is the world's largest gas transfer program over 80 million households receive subsidy directly as cash in their bank accounts this is one third of all household in this country this will completely eliminate leakages building on this we plan to introduce direct cash transfer in other benefit schemes third inflation has been controlled through firm measures while falling oil prices help even non oil inflation is at a very low level food inflation has come down from 15% a year ago to 3.1% last month this set the stage for rbi to reduce interest rates and push growth in a stable manner fourth the consensus we arrived with states for amending the constitution to implement gst is a major breakthrough aur hamare arun ji to kehte hain shayad aajadi ke baad इतना बड़ा रिफॉर्म का कोई कदम इसके पहले नहीं उठाया गया है जीएसटी हैज बिन पेंडिंग फॉर ओवर अ डेकेड 
this alone had the potential to make India competitive and attractive for investment. Fifth, the poor have been included in the financial system. In a short span of four months, over 100 million new bank accounts have been opened under Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana. For a country of our size, this was an immense challenge. But with will, determination, and the full support of every banker, we are today a nearly 100% banker country. Soon, all accounts will be linked with Aadhaar. Banking habits will become common across the country. This now opens immense possibilities for the future. People's saving will rise. They will invest in new financial instruments. 1.2 billion people can hope for pensions and insurance. At the nation progress, these bank accounts will drive demand and growth. We have always debated about social unity, national unity, and so on. But we have never debated about financial unity, about bringing everyone into the financial system. This is one cause which both capitalists and socialists agree on. <laughs> I don't think there will be a dispute between two. <laughs> what, my friends, can be a bigger reform? Six, the energy sector has been reformed. Coal blocks are now allocated transparently through auction. Mining laws have been changed to facilitate efficient mining. Similar reforms are on the way in the power sector. We have revived long pending projects in Nepal and Bhutan with the cooperation of their governments. Steps are being taken to deliver 24 by 7 power for all using every possible source, including renewable energy. Seventh, India is being made an attractive destination for investment. FDI caps have been raised to insurance and real estate. FDI and private investment are being promoted in defense and railways. The Land Acquisition Act has been amended to smoothen the process and speed up matters. This will give a thrust to infrastructure and manufacturing while protecting the compensation to farmers. Eighth, infrastructure is being given a boost. Greater investment is planned in railways and roads. New approaches and instruments are being put in place to unlock their potential. Ninth, transparency and efficiency in governance and institutional reforms are essential elements for rapid growth. These, along with a positive regulatory framework, tax stability, and ease of doing business are being pushed ahead at top speed. For instance, recently assured public sector banks, they will have total autonomy in taking 
business decisions without any interference from government on loans and their operations aur maine jab bank ki meeting mein kaha main aapko kehta hu unke liye surprise tha main unse kaha aapko is kaam mein kabhi pmo se phone nahi aayega aur main manta hu isse bada koi confidence level nahi ho sakta और यही है जो ट्रांसपेरेंसी लाती है वी नीड टू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी टू डिलीवर गुड गवर्नेंस वेदर इट इज ए सिंपल वन लाइक बायोमेट्रिक बेस अटेंडेंस विच हैज इंप्रूव ऑफिस अटेंडेंस एंड वर्क कल्चर और ए कटिंग एज वन लाइक स्पेस टेक्नोलॉजी इन मैपिंग एंड प्लानिंग I intend to launch a massive national program for PDS computerization. The entire PDS supply chain, public distribution system, from the FCI go-down to the ration shop and consumer, will be computerized. Technology will drive welfare and efficient food delivery. a major institutional reform is the move away from merely planning to transforming india the setting up of the national institution for transforming india niti aayog is a step in this direction this will take the country forward on the path of cooperative federalism and when i say cooperative federalism with a competitive zeal country requires cooperative competitive federalism there must be competition between states there must be competition between states and center the niti aayog is our mantra for creating trust and partnership between the center and states this list can be endless i can go on for days but i do not think we have the time however i have given you a sense of the immense activity we are engaged in we have done a lot so far and more will be done in future friends reforms are not an end itself reforms must have a concrete objective the objective must be to improve the welfare of the people approaches may be many but the goal is one reforms may not be apparent to one and all at first sight but small acts can drive reforms what appears minor can actually be vital and fundamental further there is no contradiction between doing big ticket items and doing small things one approach is to have new policies programs large projects and path breaking changes another approach is to focus on the small things that matter create a people's movement and generate mass momentum which then drives development we need to follow both paths let me explain this a bit generating 20000 megawatt of power attracts a lot of attention that is important agar main kal ghoshana karta hu ki hum 20000 megawatt bijli times of india ke headline pe aa jayega shayad <laughs>
at the same time, 20,000 megawatt of power can be saved through a people's movement for energy efficiency. The end result is similar. The second is more difficult, but is as important as the first. In the same way, improving a thousand primary schools is as important as opening a new university. The new aims we are setting up will improve public health in the same way as our promise of health assurance. To me, health assurance is not a scheme. It is about ensuring that every rupee spent on health is well spent. That every citizen has access to proper health care. Similarly, when, do we, when we do Swachh Bharat, it has multiple impacts. It is not just a fad or a slogan. It changes mindset. It changes our lifestyle. Swachhta becomes a habit. Waste management generates economic activity. It can create lots of Swachhta entrepreneurs. The nation gets identified with cleanliness. And of course, it has a huge impact on health. After all, diarrhea and other diseases cannot be defeated without Swachhta. The mantra of independence was Satyagraha. Mahatma Gandhi ne puri ajaji ka kendra bindu shabda raha tha Satyagraha. And the warriors were Satyagrahi. The mantra New Age India must be Swachhagraha. Like Satyagraha, Swachhagraha. And the warriors will be Swachhagrahi. Like Satyagrahi, Swachhagrahi. Take the case of tourism. It is an untapped economic activity. But tapping it requires a Swachh Bharat. It needs improvement in infrastructure and telecom connectivity. It requires better education and skill development. Therefore, a simple goal can generate reforms in multiple sectors. People must understand the Clean Ganga program. Clean Ganga program as an economic activity. The Gangetic plants account for 40% of our population. They have over 100 towns and thousands of villages. Improving Ganga will develop new infrastructure. It will promote tourism. It will create a modern economy helping millions of people. In addition, it preserves the environment. Railway is another example. There are thousands of railway stations in the country where not more than one or two trains stop in a day. These facilities created at a cost remains unused for most of the day. Our country's railway station is in small towns. There is also optical fiber network and electricity. There is no power from 2 km away from the town in the village. क्या हम इस रेलवे स्टेशन को जो कि एक या दो ट्रेन आती है वहीं पर स्किल डेवलपमेंट के सेंटर खड़े करें उस बिजली का उपयोग करें ऑप्टिकल फाइबर नेटवर्क का उपयोग करें और उसी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का मल्टीपल यूटिलिटी हो सकता है कि नहीं हो सकता स्मॉल इज इंडीड ब्यूटीफुल और मैं जब छोटा था तब एक किताब पढ़ता था स्मॉल इज ब्यूटीफुल 
in agriculture too our main goal is to raise productivity this will require using technology increasing soil fertility producing more crop per drop more crop per drop jab tak hum pani ke mahatma ko nahi samjhenge main samajhta hu hum pure hamare agriculture sector ki aur safalta purvak aage nahi badh sakte and bringing the latest from lab to land aaj agriculture sector ke vaigyaniko ko bahut research kiya hai lekin sab lab mein pada hai jab tak hum from lab to land ye process puri nahi karte farmers will not be the beneficiary cost of cultivation will go down as efficiency rises this will make agriculture viable on the output side the entire value chain in agriculture will be addressed through better storage transport and food processing linkages we will link farmers to global markets we will give the world the test of india friends i have often call for minimum government maximum governance this is not a slogan this is an important principle to transform india aur hum sab jante hain sarkari tantra ki do mulbhut samasya hai ek jatilta aur dusri shithilta government system suffer from two weaknesses they are complex and they are slow very very slow in life people go on a char dham yatra to get moksha in government a file has to go to 36 dham and yet not get moks <laughs> we need to change this our systems need to be made sharp effective fast and flexible this requires simplification of processes and having trust in citizens this needs a policy driven state what is maximum governance maximum government it means government has no business to be in business there are many parts of the economy where the private sector will do better and deliver better in 20 years of liberalization we have not changed a command and control mindset we think it is okay for government to, to meddle in the working of farms this must change but this is not a call for anarchy first we need to focus government upon the things that are required of the state second we need to achieve competence in government so that the state delivers on the things it set out to do why do we need the state there are five main components the first is a public goods such as defense police judiciary etc the second is externalities which hurt others such as pollution for this we need a regulatory system the third is market power where monopolies needs controls the fourth is information gaps where you need to someone to ensure that medicines are genuine and so on last we need a well designed welfare and subsidy mechanism to ensure that the bottom of society is protected from deprivation 
this specially includes education and health care these are five places where we require government in the five areas where we need government we require competent efficient and non corrupt arms of government we in government must constantly ask the question how much money i am spending and what outcome outcomes am i getting in return for this government agencies have to be improved to become competent this requires rewriting some laws laws are the dna of government they must evolve with time india is a 2 trillion dollar economy today can we not dream of an india with a 20 trillion dollar economy should we not create the environment for this to happen we are preparing the ground for it this is hard work i know very well this is hard work we can easy reforms will not be enough for creating a fast growing economy that is our challenge and that is what we aim to do digital india and skill india are attempts in this direction digital india will reform government systems eliminate waste increase access and empower citizens it will drive the next wave of growth which will be knowledge driven broadband in every village with a wide range of online services will transform india in a manner we cannot foresee skill india will harness the demographic dividend which everyone talks of friends improvement in governance is a continuous process we are making changes wherever acts rules and procedures are not in tune with needs we are cutting down on multiple creases that jog investment our complex tax system is crying for reform which we have initiated i believe in speed i will push through change at a fast pace you will appreciate this in times to come at the same time we need to take care of the poor deprived and left behind sections of society i believe that subsidies are needed for them i repeat subsidies are needed for poor what we need is a well targeted system of subsidy delivery we need to cut subsidy leakages not subsidies themselves wastage as i said earlier must be removed in subsidies the target group should be clearly identified and the subsidies should be well delivered the ultimate object of subsidy should be to empower the poor to break the cycle of poverty and become food soldiers in our war on poverty main us raste par jana chahta hu jahan garib swayam bhi garibi ke ladai khilaf ladai ladne ke liye sajja ho usko hum wo shastra dein wo avsar dein taki wo bhi garibi ke khilaf ladai ne ladne wala hamara ek mazboot soldier ban jaye aur tabhi hum garibi se mukti payenge at this point would also say that development has to result in jobs baaki sab baatein hain reform economic growth progress 
all are empty words if they do not translate into jobs what we need is not just more production but mass production and production by masses friends economic development cannot take a nation forward on its own development has many dimensions while on one hand we need higher incomes we also need a society which is cohesive which balance the stress and strain of a modern economy this is witness to the rise and fall of nations even now many countries have become rich in an economic sense but are poor in a social sense their family systems value systems social networks and other elements which hold a society together have broken we should not go down that path we need a society and economy which complement each other that is the only way for a nation to go forward further development seems to have become the agenda only of government bain la logo ko lagta hai ki ye vikas to sarkari kaam hai ye sarkar ka agenda hai is mindset ko hame badalna padega it is seen a scheme that should not be the case development should be everyone's agenda it should be a people's movement friends like the rest of the world we are concerned about two dangers terrorism and climate change together we will find a way to face this today everyone is looking towards asia for inspiration and growth and within asia india is important not just for its size but for its democracy and its values india's core philosophy is sarva mangalya mangalya and sarve bhavantu sukhina this is a call for global welfare global cooperation and balanced living india can be a role model of a growth and cohesiveness for the rest of the world for this we need a workforce and economy which meet global needs and expectations we need to quickly improve social indicators india should no longer be bracketed with the least developed we can do this swami vivekananda had said arise awake do not stop until the goal has been attained this should inspire us all to achieve the vision of a new age india together we can thank you very much thanks a lot public khud karwayegi sabse khushi ki baat ye hogi ki public citizens khud karwayegi through social audits etc so hum milke karenge hum delhi ko waqas waqai duniya ka apne hindustan ka dil banayenge